Do you ever wonder why your glow ups never seem to last? Well, trust me, I have been there. And if you're not new to my channel, then you know that I have been on several glow up journeys. I've glown up for summers, I've glown up for trips, I've glown up for weddings, well at least my own wedding, and with every major glow up has come a glow down. And this past summer I had to take some time to figure out why I consistently put myself in this negative cycle. I had to break it down. You cannot have a strong physical glow up without a strong mental glow up. So important to figure out what's going on up here so we can actually glow up and make it last. These tips have really helped me not only get to a place where I really feel confident in myself, feel great about myself, but it's gotten me to a place where I almost feel confident that I'm not going to revert back to my old ways, okay? Almost, we'll see, only time can tell. Although this isn't the first time that I've lost this amount of weight, this is the first time that I've gone in with the purest intentions while nurturing not only my body, but my mind. So without further ado, let's get into this video. I cannot wait to share with you guys all of the things I've learned so far. Most of the time we all know exactly how we got ourselves in the situation that we're currently in. And we know exactly what we need to do to get ourselves out of it. However, if you're not able to be honest with yourself about your current habits, you are not going to be able to even get past stage one of this journey. This past summer, I went to go see my doctor and I got a bunch of labs done and I knew my labs were gonna be messy. I knew it was gonna be messy, okay? It was pretty messy. It was all over the place and I really wasn't happy hearing a lot of the information that I heard. Afterwards, I was having a conversation with my sister, telling her about my lab work. I was like, yeah, she said I was pre-diabetic. I just don't know how I'm pre-diabetic. Like, there's just no way. My sister was like, you do tend to like to eat a lot of sugar like every day. And instantly I went into defense mode. I was like, no, I don't, that's not true. And she was like, Yes, you do. I instantly found myself getting really defensive. It is a natural human response whenever we're facing the truth. Psychological defensiveness is an evolved self-protective response. When we go into defensive mode, that is our body's way of protecting us from hurt and from shame. Your body and mind are going to lean on protecting you at all costs because you're all you have at the end of the day. But maturity is realizing that these strategies of defense aren't always healthy. And being defensive for too long will push you further and further back in this journey. The minute you are able to not only accept the truth, but also accepting the role you played in getting where you are is the minute you're going to be able to move past the first level. But you have to get past the defensiveness first, guys. You have to move past it and know it's hard. My personal journey, when it came down to it, I knew my sister was right. I mean, her delivery could be different. I got defensive because she was right. My doctor was right. My habits were not great at that time. And I had a lot of refining that had to do with my routine. We finally take an accountability for how and why we got where we currently are. It is time to remove the triggers in our life. You have probably picked up a lot of bad habits along the way. In order for you to break those habits, it's so important for you to remove the negative triggers. We talk about cues so much on my channel. Okay, we should all know the definition of a cue now, okay? A cue is an event that triggers a habit. It serves as a signal to begin. There are positive cues and there are negative cues. So if you are trying to build more positive cues in your life, you need to delete the negative cues, okay? Delete as many as you can at least. For example, you're trying to go to the gym three to four times a week after work, but you find yourself coming home after work and plopping onto the couch, scrolling through social media, watching Netflix, and you just can't seem to get yourself to the gym. It's just not happening. So what is the trigger here? 
okay? The trigger is your house. The trigger is your apartment, okay? It is the reason why you're not able to get to the gym every single day because once you get home, your body is shutting down, right? You're starting to get into relax mode. You get on the couch, you get comfortable, you start scrolling. And before you know it, you're already too deep and it's hard for you to get out, right? So how do we remove the trigger in this case? You pack a gym bag and you take your gym bag with you to work so you are forced to go straight to the gym after work, okay? We removed the trigger, which is our home, which is our comfort. The thing is it's hard because you are switching up your routine. You are switching up something that you were so used to doing, going to work and then coming straight home afterwards. However, once you start seeing the changes, you will know it is for the better. Another huge trigger for me was having a lot of sweets in my house when it came to my weight loss journey. Whenever I physically see a snack, I have no self-control. It was so hard for me to control my impulses. It's just something that I've always struggled with. So in the beginning, the first three months, I knew I had to remove those triggers until I wasn't triggered by it anymore. So that meant no sweets in my house. And it might seem extreme, but going back to the defensive mode, you have to get out of defensive mode, okay? It's not extreme because you have a bigger goal here. You have to do what you have to do at the end of the day. And if that means not having sweets and not having the things that are gonna trigger you in eyesight, then that is what you have to do. Remove the negative triggers. And the thing is, you might not see your home as a negative trigger, right? You might not see it as a negative trigger, but it is when it comes to you getting to the gym. Another great example of this for me is being on my phone in the morning. So I sign up for workout classes to where I have to get up, get dressed, get out of the house and get my day started, okay? It's a cue, right? It serves as a signal to begin. Once you start accepting how you got here and you remove the triggers in your life, you're going to be able to move on to the next stage of this journey. Next, I wanna talk about building trust with yourself. Over time, as you're making these changes, you should start feeling confident within yourself and you should start feeling a lot more trust with yourself. But you have to realize that it is going to take time to get there, okay? It's not going to happen overnight. So going back to our example about going to the gym, right, after work, there are gonna be times where your routine is completely different and you're not going to be able to go straight to the gym after work. As you build that trust in yourself and as you build that confidence, you should be able to come home, get dressed, and go straight to the gym. This is a great example. You are trying to reduce the amount of alcohol that you're consuming every weekend. First weekend, are you going to make plans to go to a full-blown rager where there's going to be people drinking a lot of alcohol and people pressuring you to drink more? I hope not, right? <laughs> no, that first weekend, you should probably reach out to a friend that you trust that you know won't pressure you to drink a lot and where you know that you're comfortable around. You're not going to put yourself in that position to fail because you haven't built that trust with yourself yet. Until you are able to trust yourself and your abilities to come home, change into your workout clothes and go straight to the gym after work, then you are going to have to pack your gym bag every single time until you're able to build that trust with yourself. And you'll know when you can move forward with a different routine. For me personally, guys, now I'm able to have sugar in my house, okay? I'm able to have sugar in the pantry because I've taken the time to learn true balance. But I gave myself the time to learn true balance. That's the big difference, okay? I didn't just say, oh, I'm going on a health journey, but I can have sugar in the house. It's fine. No, no, <laughs> because that's not where I was in the beginning. That's not where I was in the beginning. And until you're at the place where you could have these triggers around, then you need to keep them removed, okay? Okay, guys, next let's talk about emotional regulation, okay? regulating our emotions when it comes to a new journey. The thing is guys, emotional regulation is sexy. Someone who is able to regulate their emotions 
at all times is sexy. You win. You win, okay? There's nothing sexier than it. In my early 20s, I was pretty impulsive, very reactive. If I felt some way about a certain situation, I always had to react in the moment. Those traits trickled down into my day-to-day -day life as well. Whenever I felt stressed, just not like myself, I would lean on food and sugary treats for comfort. There are always going to be stressors in life. You're not going to be able to avoid them. There are always going to be things that stress you out in life. However, are you going to let the stress that happens in life control you, your body, the way you feel? Absolutely not. At the end of a long day, at the end of a long stressful work day, the only thing that used to bring me comfort was comfort food. And I, when I say comfort food, I mean like fast food, a lot of sugar and alcohol. Those were the only things that brought me comfort at the end of the day. So I really had to learn how to sit with my emotions, okay? Take the time to sit and feel what I was feeling, even if that meant that I was going to break down and cry. Learn to process those emotions and learn healthy coping mechanisms to get through it. Because like I said before, stress is always going to be here. We cannot avoid stress, unfortunately. Okay, we're gonna be stressed within our jobs, we're gonna be stressed within our relationships. It's how you react and how you cope that makes the biggest difference in our lives. Now, some people like to suppress, some people don't, some people like to go to therapy. A study that in 2020 concluded that weight loss in an adult outpatient obesity treatment program was greater when the patient also improved their emotional regulation skills, especially when dealing with negative emotions, which shows that if you are able to really take the time to understand your emotions, process them, and figure out why you feel the way you feel, you are less likely to put yourself in that cycle over and over again. I'm always going to be someone that just needs to munch on something when I'm stressed. So instead of having chips in my house that are going to keep me stuck, that are going to keep me in this negative cycle, I bring in more fruits, okay? I bring in grapes. It's better for me to munch on grapes for 10 minutes to take an edge off than to munch on chips. And once you start to realize how the food industry really is here in America, you will start to really understand why you can't stop. Because then you start to realize that a lot of the ingredients in the snacks that we're so addicted to here in America, a lot of those ingredients are made to make you want more. There's ingredients in these chips that make you want to keep going. And then you continue this negative cycle. Ugh, it's a whole thing, guys. And honestly, that's just a whole industry that we can get into. The food industry here in America is crazy. Having healthier snacks in your home, if you must have snacks, is a great thing. Going on a nice walk after a long, hard work day will do wonders, okay? Oh, it will do so much good for you going on a walk after a long, hard, stressful work day. Going to the gym, going to the gym after work is a great way to take the edge off. It's talking to a therapist or someone you trust, but trying to learn how to get into a mode of emotional regulation is so important. Next thing I wanna talk about is that nothing lasts forever. I talked a little bit about this earlier on, okay? I need you to remember, guys, that nothing lasts forever, okay? And when you're going on a journey of change, if you are removing these like negative things in your life, it is not going to last forever. You are going to be able to eat a cookie again. You are going to be able to go to Chick-fil-A and get your favorite meal. However, in the beginning stages, in the first month, first three months, you owe it to yourself to be disciplined and to get your body to a place where it feels good, where you feel good, where you feel healthy. You owe it to yourself. So if that means not having a sugary treat for 30 days, then that means not having a sugary treat for 30 days. You will be okay. 
I don't know. I just think that there has to be a level of mental toughness that comes into play when it comes to these things. Yes, it's going to be hard, but that's the point. Nothing worth having is easy. And there's going to be some level of struggle. There's going to be some level of intensity that grows within yourself during this journey. However, that does not mean we go back to our old ways, okay? That does not mean we fall into our old habits. It's not going to last forever. You're not always going to feel like you need these things to survive. You're not always going to feel like you need a treat to survive or you need Chick-fil-A to survive. I love Chick-fil-A, guys. But the first three months of this journey, I didn't have a Chick-fil-A sandwich. My favorite Chick-fil-A sandwich, the spicy number two. I didn't have it the first three months. Did I go from 100 to zero? No. I slowly weaned myself off of it. And if you've been following my channel from the beginning, then you know I was going to Chick-fil-A and I would get a kale salad, I would get grilled nuggets, I would get some soup. And then I completely cut out fast food over time it was a gradual process and once i completely cut it off i didn't go into this process thinking that i am never gonna have chick-fil-a again i need to cleanse my body i need to get to a place where i feel amazing and then over time i'm going to be able to add these things in over time you're going to be able to add these things in and learn true balance that takes time and that takes commitment so no it does not last forever however you have to get into the mindset that these goals are more important than temptation than a craving it's more important same thing with intermittent fasting a lot of people do not love the idea of intermittent fasting let me just say this guys you're not going to feel great once you first start intermittent fasting but I promise you, those feelings do not last forever. Your body gets used to it and you will feel good eventually. But you just have to give it time. You have to give it time. Same thing with this journey. You have to give it time. Over time, you will start to see the changes. You cannot give up after a month. Let me tell you guys, for me, after my first month, I didn't see many changes in this journey at all. I did lose a few pounds, maybe like five pounds, but I didn't see many changes. Actually, someone commented on a video recently and was saying that like, they only lost five pounds and they were really discouraged. Yeah, the first five pounds, it doesn't feel like much different. Even the first 10 pounds doesn't feel much different, but it is, there's a big difference. You have to get out of that mindset though and look at this journey as like being so much more important than the number on the scale. It's all about how you feel within yourself. And once you're more focused on how you feel and how your body is reacting to these amazing changes, the number on the scale isn't gonna matter as much. Chick-fil-A is not gonna matter as much. It's going to be one of those things that you go and eat every once in a while as a treat. Same thing with sugar. It's gonna be something that is at the back of your mind. It's gonna be something that you don't crave anymore. But you have to realize that nothing lasts forever and these cravings aren't going to be here forever. The last thing I wanna leave you guys with is to go ghost, okay? Go in peace during this journey. You do not need to make a huge announcement that you are going on a weight loss journey or a weight gain journey. Whenever you announce something like this, it always brings in all the people with a lot of unsolicited advice. Although your support system is really important during this journey, it is truly you versus you. Whenever I'm going through something new, I really don't like to get too much advice from people. You know yourself best. There's no one who knows you more than you. So whenever you make a plan for weight loss, yes, a little bit of advice here and there is very much appreciated. However, at the end of the day, you should always do what's best for you. Take note of how you're feeling, take note of your progress, take note of your plateaus, and figure out how to get past it, okay? Figure out how to get past it. Seek help from professionals, 
Seek help from people who know what they're doing, who are in the position that you wish that you could be in. Don't seek help from people who are not even close to where you want to be. The next time we hang out, you're going to be a different person, right? You're already gonna be a different person, mentally, physically, all the things. Remember, like I said in a recent video, it is you versus you. So make sure the right you wins. All right guys, so this is gonna be it for this video, but I do wanna say this though. I do not claim to have all the answers, okay? I am learning, I'm growing, I'm evolving, and I'm sharing all of this that I'm learning as I go. And I just hope that the lessons that I've learned resonates with someone out there that's possibly going through the same things that I'm going through because I do have a lot of tips that I feel like would help no matter what stage you are in your life. Even though I haven't been through all walks of life yet, I'm really speaking honestly from the experience of a girl who doesn't have kids yet and who hasn't experienced that realm of life yet. So I know it's not as easy as X, Y, and Z and ABC, especially when it comes to diet and all those things. I just wanna make it known that I know it's not that simple. I hope though down the line when I have kids and stuff, I'm still making videos because motherhood is a whole different journey and I can only imagine where my mindset is going to be then and how I navigate life then. And I'm so excited about it. I am so excited about navigating life as a mother. You know, when the time comes, if I'm still making videos on the internet, I will definitely share exactly how I am navigating it. So anyway, I just wanted to say that. I know I'm talking to myself in circles, but I just hope that makes sense because I've always wanted to address that. But let me know if you have any questions down below. Leave some advice for the girlies down below and I will see you guys in the next video. I love you guys so much. Thanks for joining me. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.